Hey there, it's Norm from Tested, and I'm so excited to introduce you guys. Well, some of you may already be familiar with Patrick Norton. Patrick, who has been a guest on our podcast many times, also the host of Tech Thing, a co-host of Tech Thing, and also you might know him from Vision Three and Techzilla, the old days. Tech TV, if and you're tech really TV. old. Tech uh, TV. Patrick is actually going to be our new senior technology correspondent for things excited. that you're excited about. And I'm also terrified because you guys are up on your game. Well, <laughs> you have such high game on things like audio. I have issues with audio. <laughs> issues with audio issues. Uh, we want to talk about today. So uh, this first video we're going to do is actually talk about some high-end audio, answer some questions I have and some of you out there may have about how to listen to high-end audio. Well, okay, it sounds like like you listen every day, right? Yeah. You got ears, assuming your ears still function. Um, you're hearing things all the time and it sounds really funny but you know I'll put on a pair of headphones and I'll listen to them and I'll you know I'll pass judgment on them because I'm reviewing them and a friend of mine's like oh you have the golden ears and it's like I don't have golden ears I just spend a lot of time listening in a very kind of I don't know, organized fashion, as ridiculous as that sounds. Um, right, because you know, you go into like, a, like an Apple store or right. Best Buy and you see speakers, you know, like the Zeppelin Wireless here, above five, but between that $500 or $1,000, right. it's not something you're just gonna spend $100 on. And you wanna feel like you get the quality that you're mm -hmm. paying for. And for most people, a lot of people, they don't know what that quality means. Well, what what is it that, you're, what, are, what are you supposed to be listening for? Well, it's kind of funny. So, Back in my early 20s, uh, before the children uh, and the full-time day job, I would probably see easily like 200 bands in a year um, it is what I did. And in a lot of cases, they were in tiny, tiny rooms and the stage was like 12 inches high and I could reach out and like touch the bass stack and then I would be beaten down um, like a redheaded stepchild for touching the man's instrument. But, but the idea is that music sounds very, very distinctive. And when everything started to go online and with MP3s, especially in the early days of MP3s, there's this idea of like CD quality audio. It's 128 kilobits per second. It's like CD quality. And the reality is, is what the compression did and what it still does in a lot of streaming services um, is it squeezes the music down. Now, it's miraculous, right? Because there's this incredible art and science of psychoacoustics. People have spent decades and zillions of dollars figuring out how your skull processes audio or more accurately what happens in your ears and between your ears and your brain and how your brain actually looks at things and that's how compression works they're like okay we can remove this bit and this stuff over here and this your stuff brain over here won't notice this and that most exactly people. most people but it's funny right the, you know it used to be really brutal like in the early days of mp3 like the cruelest thing you could do would take something like um a beach boys song with those multi-layer harmonies or choral music because i know a lot of you are really big on the you know 14th century choral music like my wife is um but it would it would smirch these four or five voices into like a single univoice kind of mm. like unikitty but much more violent um but the the end result was that you would have something that didn't really sound like the original source and as you know, uh, compression tools got better and compression got better and bandwidth became less of an issue. Compression became less problematic, but there's still a lot of cases where you've taken perfectly good like CD audio files or you're downloading music or you have those downloads you have from when you were 14 and you could be doing a lot better. Hmm. And you should be before you start dropping hundreds of dollars on standalone, you know, audio devices. And I, I gotta say one thing right now, Money is not necessarily a good listening experience. Money is not necessarily buying you a lot. And in some cases, expensive devices sound like crap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how do you discern that? I mean, you go, you went to 200 concerts a year and right. you're listening and so you know the difference between this instrument and that instrument from different distances, different room environments. For a lot of people out there who maybe don't want to destroy their ears or, <laughs> or just want to test their own existing equipment. There, if you go to concerts, there are wonderful quality ear earplugs from like Vimoda and other companies. Uh, the Vimoda faders are amazing, right? Because yeah. you can put them in your ears and they drop the level like 15 or 20 dB and the music still sounds like music. It's not like taking the foam earplugs and mm. being like... Muffling and muddling everything. I can hear the kick drum. <laughs> I think that was a cymbal, right? But as ridiculous as it sounds, um, you know, start with, if you, if you have like CDs, Start with CDs. If you don't have CDs, um, download like some decent audio online. Or if you have Spotify, pay for Spotify streaming. Get like the 300K files. Do the high quality files and start listening. Um, you know, 
Grado um, SR60Es are amazing for like 60 or 75 bucks. Yeah. They're open back. They have this, there's this audio file concept, stone stage. They have incredible presence, you know, and, and, and man, uh, the only thing worse than like professional reviewers, some of whom I absolutely adore as human beings, uh, is online reviews. Because like you know, Headfi is an amazing place. I love Headfi. Jude's amazing. It, it's, it, Jude's a, built this incredible place where audio geeks can gather and talk about headphones and headphone amps and DACs, which are digital analog converters. We'll get to that in a second. But um, you, you run into a lot of like, well, you know, I just don't simply feel the presence to justify. Upgrading to and, and and you're sitting there and you're like yeah 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 swish it in your mouth take your breath off the glass spit it into the bucket and get over with because you're irritating me right because people are like, you can't really do serious audio for less than five thousand dollars right and that's can I say bullshit on this yeah podcast? absolutely okay. <laughs> I don't, is it's this bullshit a, is this the no, same rule totally. of the podcast right because you know great OSR sixty es is like a you know seventy five dollar headphone online Sony MDR seventy five oh sixes. I've seen some of the most expensive recording consoles in the world and the dude twiddling the knobs or gal twiddling the knobs are listening to what is essentially a $75 set of headphones. They sound amazing. So mm -hmm. start cheap. And one of the nice things about headphones, especially a sealed headphones, uh, like you know Sennheiser Momentum right here, the Sony MDR 7506s, is you get this very controlled environment. Yeah. Where you know you've got you've got basically a known good headphone, and then you can start experimenting with you know MP3 players or the output jack on your computer or your phone. Phones have gotten amazing. The iPhones have been pretty consistently good for years with the audio output. Um, a lot of the Android phones are really really good. You don't need to buy the one that's like, well, it processes HD audio at 96 kilohertz, 24 bit for a superior audio performance. You ain't got the ears to hear like 96K. Nobody has the ears to hear 96K. There may be things where like resonance are created, but the reality is, is most people, if you're over like the age of 25 or over the age of like 15 or over the age of like eight, um, fact, your audio in terms of hearing the high end peaks at around eight years of age and then goes down. Yeah, like my eight year old, he can pick up 19 kilohertz test tones. Huh. Um, That's if, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, that? and and there's entire like product structures built around irritating teenagers, where it's like su super high tones that they broadcast in front of the you know the mall entrance, or ringtones that teachers can't hear but the kids <laughs> can hear, so they can you know they Same. get their text messages and like sit down there and 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 Snapchat and whatever. But, so start with good sources. Okay. So right? yeah. So you know a good place like so you know the transducers, the things that turns the electrical impulses into the stuff you hear, right? Spend. 75 bucks, get a good set of headphones. If you don't have 75 bucks, spend 20 bucks, um, um, go to Monoprice. Uh, you know, they're, I think it's the 8030s, 8025s, 8030s. Um, they have a $25 headphone that sounds entirely too good for the money you pay, right? Um, put a link to that in the show notes with the actual right name on it. But, you know, get a good set of headphones and then listen to everything. Mm. Right? Listen. Yeah, build up a library in your head. Yeah. Build up those 200 concerts, except know the songs that you right. really like and pick a diverse selection pick classical music mm -hmm. pick something with lots of layers in it and listen for the individual instruments yeah i mean at the at the very least like listen find the 10 your 10 favorite songs buy them on cd or buy a lossless mm. version um, you know, buy a CD, convert it into a FLAC file, or if you're in the iTunes environment, use the Apple lossless compression, and then listen to the snot out of those, listen to the shit out of those songs until you know them really intimately. And something that's really funny, like, you know, I put these, uh, you know, the Hi-Fi Man HE400s, these are like a pair of $300 headphones, they, they just continue, discontinue these and replace these with the HE400S, right? These are magnetic planar, we'll talk about that another time. But it's amazing, if I put these on, well, I did put these yeah, on your head. Yeah, they sounded fantastic. Yeah, and what happens is as you go from a super cheap, like if you've been listening with earbuds that came with your phone, everything's going to change and this is awesome. And it's kind of like the difference, you know, when you're exercising, the difference between like sitting in your chair versus walking for 15 every 15 minutes every day is huge. The difference between, you know, listening to music on your phone and then getting good files and getting like a $75 set of headphones is huge. It's mind changing because what you start hearing is more of what the you know recording engineers and the artists put into the track. There's a lot of music there that you may never actually listen or listen or hear because you've never had a decent source or a decent you know uh, uh, speaker or set of headphones. Now the audio file, you know, you take it from a CD. That's right. that's relatively cheap. You're going to get really good quality. 
play from the CD uh, with different type of headphones, even high quality ones. They're right. gonna pull different things out. Um, is there a standard that you should listen for or just pick a preference? Like how do you know what's right through the right equipment? Well, that's what's kind of funny is you start, if you listen to a lot of stuff, um, I mean, it's funny, I, I talk about live music, but I can think of places, um, man, I can't think of the name, but there was this, there was a place we used to go to, to see, say the Red Hot Chili Peppers in New York City, like they played all the time. Worst sound system on the planet. It was atrocious. Like, like we went there to see the band and then it was kind of like, oh, they're playing at that place again because their, their system was blown out. But in a lot of cases, if you've heard, you know, music at a good concert, it's a wonderful standard. If you haven't, start with a CD, start with a good set of headphones, um, and start listening a lot. And then you'll sort of pick out passages. What a lot of professional reviewers do, like when they're listening to 10 sets of headphones, or they listen to headphones all the time. Um, Inner Fidelity, uh, Tile, who is the guy, I hope he's saying his name right, who founded Headroom, which was one of the, the big uh, headphone amp DAC companies. Um, you know, he's got like, you know, 10 or 15 30 second snippets he's taken from sort of his critical listening moments. Like for me, there's a particular Rage Against the Machine track where the, the bass and the guitar are going off and there's this ride cymbal being hammered. And I know exactly what that ride cymbal is supposed to sound like. And if it doesn't sound right, then I know something's a little off. Um, it's funny, like Beats has made this amazing market for $300 headphones. Um, but the original Beats headphones from an audio standpoint were kind of atrocious because they were like, let's push all the faders up on the bass and eh, whatever, the rest of it doesn't matter. Um, there's some new Beats models that are, that are much, much better. But what you find is that you know, there's nothing wrong like um, the Crossfade M100, which is a headphone from V Moda. Um, you know, they, they kind of, they boost the high end a bit and they boost the low end a bit, which is fine. It may not be the most accurate thing, but it's incredibly pleasurable to listen yeah, to. Yeah, some people love having that bass, right. some people love having the highs, depending on what type of songs you're listening to. Yeah, and it's like, you know, if you were a bass head and you want something that thumps, you're looking for a different experience than mm -hmm. people who want like an accurate reproduction of what the audio recording engineer was attempting to record. And then, because it's, it's funny, because you know, much like soundtracks for movies, um, the the entire audio environment has really been faked, right? There's there's no, I mean, there's there's cases where there's where they've actually taken like a really amazing pair of microphones and a two track recorder, um, and they've recorded like in a particularly amazing sounding church or concert hall or something, right? And that you have literally as close to you know planting your butt in a seat for a private show, which is great because there's nobody screaming around you. You don't have that guy that doesn't know the words howling behind your head. Um, but there's this that's about as pure as it gets. But for the most part. It's faked. Yeah, there's like, when you look at something like, um, boy, like the Beach Boys or the Beatles would be like the extreme examples where it's like 32,000 different things going on in the studio. But mm -hmm. generally speaking, like all of the instruments are mic'd. Many of the instruments are actually recorded separately. Like they record the drum track with a click track with like 17 mics and that's mixed down, you know, from like, you know, down to these tracks and then the bass player comes in or the guitar player and then the vocals and then they massage and manipulate um, it's really amazing when you hear some of like some of the most amazing recordings and and the audio engineer and the producer are talking there's a show where they say oh and then we realized you know if we just posted it right here and then you know we needed something else so we recorded like you know more cowbell and the cowbell comes up here and you're like oh! all of a sudden it sounds amazing but that's this incredible process of creating the art which is not just you know the the woman or man singing and playing guitar or playing drum or playing bass or playing oboe or whatever else is going on but the process of choosing mics placing mics recording mics getting it onto the board is it analog is it digital does it really make a difference and then you know mastering it which is you know in most cases probably should be done by the person who recorded it but it is often done by somebody yeah. else and then it changes. And then over time with older recordings, they get remastered, which is a whole rat hole I'm not going to go down into. Right. So, I mean, that gives you a base, a good foundation right. for to start. Get good sources for the audio, mm -hmm. whether it's a CD, high quality bitrate download, mm -hmm. pay for the premium service, at least to try them out. Yeah. And then get a good pair of starter headphones, you know, like the ones you mm -hmm. listed. Now, what about moving them from that to speakers? Now, what are the things like the room where the speaker right. listening is going to matter? You know where you positioned yourself in front of the speaker. That's a less control, a few more variables there. Absolutely, it's it's funny. Sonos uh, speakers really changed how my wife and I listen to music, mm. right? Because it became like we always have our phones. Our phones are always attached to us, and yeah. we could stream from you know the media that was stored on one of our PCs, um, or we could stream using Pandora and later Spotify. But it became like this fundamental, like hey, we've got you know one in this room, and then one in that room, then we end up one in the other room, and then one in the other room, and we could you know. Boom 
move them together. She could play stuff up here. I could play stuff up there. You know, is a Sonos as good as a pair of dedicated audiophile speakers attached to a high-end amplifier or a decent AVR in a dedicated listening room? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. But... That's not how people listen to music. Yeah, I mean, Bob Marley sounds amazing over AM radio. Yeah. Right? You know, Bach sounds amazing over AM radio. It doesn't, may, it may not be the sort of ephemeral transporting experience, right? Um, well, if you want to minimize the variables, for example, and you right. have the choice between setting music over Bluetooth mm -hmm. or AirPlay, for example, right. like, or, or Line Ed, what are you going to choose? Like, is, is there one that's going to be so much better than the other? Or are we at a point where it's all about equal as long as the source is good? It's, uh, well, one, start with a good source. Two, in theory, I mean, I, I, in my personal order, I'd probably be like wired, AirPlay, Bluetooth used to be down here. Uh -huh. But, you know, uh, in, in the past couple of years, it's been amazing. Um, yeah. I got to review an audio engine B1, which is like, you know, it's a $189 Bluetooth, you know, basically. It takes Bluetooth. It's got a really nice digital analog converter inside of it and punches out stereo to your amplifier or your AVR. And I was just kind of like, this is going to suck. This is going to, hey, this sounds really good. This sounds really good. And yeah. part of that is once you get past, you know, when you start getting into like Bluetooth 4.0 and AppDex, you stop being like, we're going to take the technology that was created to allow you to wirelessly connect a keyboard and <laughs> pretend we're stuffing audio. Well, we, they didn't pretend. They stuffed audio over it. But and Bluetooth. It, the new standards. Right. Yeah. I mean, it used to be atrocious because they would take Bluetooth uh, and they would take your audio and they would compress the snot out of your audio and stuff it through Bluetooth. And when you design a, you know, a personal area network transport protocol to connect keyboards, to a device, mm -hmm. it's just not really yeah. up to the task of carrying, you know, audio, much less stereo audio. So, you know, um, the later versions of the the eighty two P is it? I always the, I wrote it down because I, after years, I still can't remember it. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Advanced audio distribution profile. A two DP. A two DP was the start of it not sucking, and then they came up. You know, Aptex came up with a version uh, that would do. Um, where they basically didn't compress the snot out of your music. Um, you know, the, in theory, in Bluetooth 4, it can actually, if your re Bluetooth receiver and your Bluetooth device are both capable of handling, say, MP3 or ALAC or whatever it is, it will directly hand it to the device, which can make a huge difference. But a lot of Bluetooth speakers sound really amazing. They may, you know, they're not going to give you, you know, stereo imaging. They're not going to give you the sort of idea of a sound stage that you mm -hmm. would get from two speakers that are eight or ten feet apart and you're ten feet away from and you're sitting in that 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 critical spot. But part of this is a process of discovering. You know, headphones are a good place to start because it's a pretty controlled environment. Um, you know, at the very least, though, like we were saying before, like start with a good source and then get kind of a known quality. And then, you know, the, the pathway from the studio to your your ears. Right. Minimize those variables. Yes. Right? No. Get your known quantities out of the way. Mm -hmm. The source, your DAC, your, your output. Right. Right. The connection between the player right. and the speaker. And then if it's the speaker or headphone. You know, so minimize those variables. Mm -hmm. And then with that system in place. Then you can begin to learn to listen. Yeah, I mean, start with you know, start with your phone, start with your computer. You know, get to know what it sounds like on that, and then get a chance to audition your files, not somebody else's files, on that. And if you hear a difference, and you go like the thing I want, there's this epiphanal moment. Like you know, if I put these headphones on your head, and you go, oh, right, that's amazing right yeah. because the, there's so much information that is in the music that is often not you know it, it gets you know as information gets tossed away to compress you lose some of that right and it sounds ridiculous but you know the 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 sound stage right oh, the sound stage was incredible well you know the reason these grados are known for the sound stage is because you start getting the sense in a lot of cases there are a whole lot of instruments and there's a whole lot of sound and there's the interaction between the sound and the room they were recording on and the microphones and the careful careful you know post processing it's done by the 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 mastering engineer and there's this amazing auditory experience this is incredible musical experience if nothing else it's nice to know that like hey i'm hearing all the bass you know i'm hearing all the high end. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're into dub or whether you're into, you know, you're a shoegazer or you're into punk. Okay, a lot of punk recordings suck and really, really good headphones and speakers make you realize how bad the recording was, but it's still punk. So, yeah. Yeah. and be practical about it, right? Yeah. You, you're going to be auditioning. I like the idea mm -hmm. auditioning the equipment, auditioning the content um, in a way that you're actually listening to it in yeah. your day to day. I mean, 
one of the nice things, you know, if you've got a place, you know, whether it's like the Magnolia section of, of a Best Buy, you know, go in there and listen to the headphones, you know, yeah. Sennheiser HD 800, it's like a $1,300, $1,400 set of headphones. But, you know, if you know, okay, I know my phone and those are supposed to be badass headphones, does my phone music sound better? Maybe not. So then you might think about a different source. And that's when you start getting into sort of an outboard digital analog converter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the iFi is pretty cool, the, the stuff they do. Um, we talked about that when I did that yep. sort of standalone uh, 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 Raspberry Pi audio player, but um, it's kind of amazing what you can get for very, very little money. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys learned a little bit from that. And obviously, Patrick, you have so much in your head that we want to <laughs> pick apart and learn about. That's just in the audio space. We're going to have plenty of opportunities for that in the future. Place your questions for Patrick in the comments. We'll address them sometime in the future. And we're going to talk about more audio technologies, talk sure. about DACs, talk about some of your specific headphones that you like in future videos. Um, cool. But until then, uh, we'll see you next time. That's Patrick. I'm Norm. See ya.